Good morning, good afternoon, good evening for all of you who have joined this uh, webinar. It's, uh, I'm very happy to have you all. And um, we can see that many more participants are joining in. So this is only a few introductory words. Um, we are launching this afternoon the regional um, review on uh, aquaculture of the Nena region, the Near East and North Africa. And this is one of the seven webinars we have, we are, will be launching this week with two already happened yesterday. So welcome on board. Uh, my name is Alessandro Lovatelli. I will be your moderator this afternoon. So uh, <clears throat> let's start the day by passing on the word to Matthias Halbert, head of the aquaculture branch of the fisheries division of FAO. Matthias, please, the word over to you. Thank you very much, Sandro. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, a very good day to all of you. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to this webinar, which is the third in a series of seven consecutive webinars. There are a number of important reasons for FAO to be organizing these events this week. First, the year 2020 has kicked off with a reaffirmation of our global commitment and call for coordinated and accelerated actions towards achieving the Sustainable Development Goals and the 2030 Agenda. So what role can and will aquaculture play in this decade of action? And what actions should be prioritized for a better impact of aquaculture, particularly for the zero hunger goal? These are key questions we had wanted to discuss at the FAO NACA Global Conference on Aquaculture Millennium Plus 20, which was supposed to be held in Shanghai this week. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic has forced us to postpone this conference and in agreement with our host, the Chinese Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs is now scheduled for new dates 22 to 27 September 2021. Now, proposing future actions for greater impact in aquaculture should be informed by sound knowledge, by facts and figures. And that brings me to my second point. At FAO, we have been compiling these reviews since 1995, every five years. And we are about to complete the 2020 edition right now. So providing our latest results to you as we had planned to be done in Shanghai is precisely the background and purpose for engaging with you now. So what will be presented today are the key messages, the challenges and the options for the way forward in the Near East and North Africa region presentations and discussions with distinguished panelists representing different stakeholder groups will complement the agenda. And I believe we can all look forward to a very interesting and stimulating exchange. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matthias, for your welcoming remarks. And let's get st straight into the webinar. And um, the first thing we will do is launch a recorded video from His Excellency Dr. Saud Al Habsi, the Minister of Agriculture, Fisheries, Wealth, and Water Resources from Oman. Following this brief uh, in video, recorded video, we will launch the presentation of the NENA review itself, followed by three messages from distinguished invited guests from our region, and I will introduce them later on. And uh, following this, we will have a short uh, question and answer sessions. Um, please note that the current, uh, the video, the webinar is actually being recorded 
and it will be available for further distribution or for seeing again later on. And also, <clears throat> should you have any questions, please add your questions in the question and answer box below your screens and indicate if you want any particular person to answer the question. So <clears throat> let's start with the welcoming uh, video recorded message from Dr. Al Habsi. Can the secretary please launch the video? Thank you. Dear distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on the behalf of Sultanate of Oman, it's our honor to be part of this important event on regional review on status and trends in aquaculture development in the Near East and North Africa 2020, which will highlight the main aspects of development and aquaculture sector in the region. The previous regional review that took place in 2015 has successfully provided a roadmap to a sustainable development of aquaculture in the region. Sultanate of Oman, with its 3,165 kilometers of pristine, unpolluted coastal line, has identified aquaculture as a key pillar for diversification of its national economy beyond the oil sector. Oman's combination of natural resources, world-class infrastructure, attractive incentive, and strong committed government authority makes make it unique, well positioned to take advantage of the opportunity presented by the aquaculture sector. Ministry of Agriculture, Wealth, Fisheries and Water Resources is committed to develop an excellent, sustainable and socially responsible aquaculture industry that will provide attractive return to the investors and lasting benefit to the Omani communities. Various initiatives conducted by the ministry ended by issuing the National Strategy for Sustainable Aquaculture, Development of Aquaculture 2012 to 2014, in an aim to produce 200,000 metric ton by 2040. With a strong government commitment, many private sectors have been engaged with many projects. By this, we encourage more investors to invest in the aquaculture industry to avail the benefit and advantage that provided by the Omani government. Aquaculture in Near East and North Africa region has an important role in the fishery sector, showing a rapid growth in the last decades. Despite this increase, there have been many challenges that needed to be addressed by the countries in the region, including better governors, biosecurity issues, environmental concern, spatial planning, marketing, and value chain improvement, climate change, and emerging effects of COVID-19. These challenges emphasize the need for a robust regional cooperation and unified strategies to overcome them. Oman, as an active member in the Regional Committee for Fisheries, believes strongly in the important role of FAO. Regional Fisheries Management Organization in the Sustainable Development of Aquaculture. Within this organization, many initiatives have been adopted for aquaculture sector in the region, including the Aquaculture Strategy for General Fisheries Commission for Mediterranean and Harmonization of Aquaculture Statistics of RECOFI. RECOFI also has adopted an electronic platform named Regional Aquaculture Information System for sharing all information regarding aquaculture sector within its region, within its area. Education and training research and development and continuous coordination between countries in the region are also vital in addressing these challenges. Therefore, Regional Fisheries Management Organization support should be strengthened to effectively perform the role in this regard. Aquaculture plays an important role in achieving an effective, sustainable development goals through regional level where opportunities are more accessible for creating and enabling frameworks and initiatives that streamline all efforts. Aquaculture development has not only contributed 
to the main fisheries related SDG 14, life below water, but cover all other 16 SDGs. Many initiatives and cases on a national and regional level in, in the North, Near East and North Africa region has attributed to SDG. This include, but not limited to, increased aquaculture production will help in achieving SDG 1, 2, and 3, providing equal job opportunities, SDG 5 and 8, quality control and traceability of seafood products, responsible consumption and production, SDG 12, spatial planning and stock enhancement, SDG 14. In order to achieve this SDG goals in the upcoming years, there is, th there is a need for more coordination at the national, regional, and international levels. The success of regional fisheries management organization in the, and their initiatives in fisheries and aquaculture would not be effective without a continuous support from FAO. FAO has a vital role for, for in the embarrassing international and inter-regional initiative, such as hand-by-hand -hand initiative, providing technical, legal, financial support, and to help countries to share their experience. Respected guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you and wish you a productive discussion with a practical recommendation that will help us in the region to move forward towards sustainable aquaculture industry to fulfill the sustainable development goals. Thank you. And thank you to you, um, Dr. Al-Habsi. Well, <clears throat> I think we have heard some important messages given by the minister, not only that uh, Oman is committed to uh, develop an environmentally and socially sustainable aquaculture industry, but he's indicated very clearly that the, despite the growth in the, of the sector in the region, they've had to face a number of challenges covering governance, biosecurity, environmental concerns, spatial planning, trade, and now COVID. And he also mentioned that these challenges call for a much stronger regional cooperation and the development of unified strategies. And with specific regards to strengthening regional collaboration, he highlighted the important role played by the regional fisheries management organization, such as RECOFI and GFCM. He also highlighted the role of FAO in continually providing technical and legal assistance to the countries. Now, following this, we will immediately start with the launching of the review itself. Allow me to introduce Dr. Malcolm Dixon, who is a self-employed, currently a self-employed international aquaculture and fisheries uh, consultant. Most recently, Malcolm was the country director of World Fish in Bangladesh. And prior to this, he was the uh, country director of World Fish in Egypt. He has been working with us for the past few months on the review. So um, Malcolm, good afternoon. Could you kindly share your screen with us? And once you have, please go ahead with the presentation. Thank you, Malcolm. Okay, the screen is on. The floor is yours. Thank you, Sandro. Uh, thank you very much for that introduction. Um, it's really uh, an honor for me to be able to present this. And um, uh, good afternoon, uh, salam alaikum, and sabah al khair to everybody who's uh, tuning into this, this webinar uh, across the world. Um, the review we're looking at is for aquaculture in the Near East and North Africa region. Uh, and it was uh, written by myself, uh, Malcolm Dixon, uh, assisted to a very large extent by Alessandro uh, in FAO and other FAO reviewers and headquarters and regional offices who have also helped through review and comments on drafts. We've also had other experts from the private sector and governments and NGOs from countries in the region uh, who, who also helped in the, to review different drafts of the, of the document. 
we think about the geographic coverage of Near East and North Africa, so there's 17 countries, uh, starting with um, uh, Morocco in the west and extending to Oman in the east, covering the countries along the northern Mediterranean, uh, Egypt down the Red Sea, um, Saudi Arabia, and the Gulf states, uh, also Syria and, uh, and Iraq. So the total land area is 9.8 million kilometers squared. It's mainly uh, arid, semi-arid, but there are extensive coastlines. There, it includes a wide range of different economies. There's some of the richest countries in the world, high income states, a lot of middle income countries, and several low income states, some of which are affected by conflict. The total population in 2018 was 358 million, and that's expected to reach 435 million in 2030. And there's generally a high dependence on hydro hydrocarbons and imports of uh, food. The main data sources for this review are uh, the usual um, FAO databases, World Bank databases, FAO reports, uh, World Fish publications, been important, um, and of course the 2015 review. Also the GFCM uh, publications have been very helpful, as well as uh, journal articles and uh, a lot of personal communications, comments from reviewers have really helped with this review as well. So compared to the previous reviews, um, if we look at the continuing trends, then what we see is continued growth of aquaculture in the region. Um, we also see that production statistics are, are dominated by Egypt. Um, and most countries in Nina are still relying on imports as the main source of fish. Newer trends um, are really the proactive efforts to expand aquaculture, and that's really achieving results in Saudi Arabia. And in several other countries in the region, then they've been very proactive about starting aquaculture, but working from very low volumes. And I'll, I'll show some figures later. Um, there's an increased emphasis, I think, on aquaculture for to supply fish for domestic markets in several countries. But there's a continuing challenging situation with conflict and, and post-conflict conflict problems in, in several countries. And then, of course, we have COVID-19 disruption of supply chains. So if we look at, um, at the overall picture for uh, production, um, total production in the region in 2018 was 1.7 million tonnes, and this compares to 1.15 million tonnes in 2013. So that's a 50% increase in production. Now, Egypt was responsible for 92% of that production in 2018, 1.5 million tonnes, and that's mainly tilapia, mullet and carps from pond-based systems. Saudi Arabia responsible for 4.2% for, uh, of the total, that's 72,000 tonnes, and production from other countries was 25,000 tonnes or less. And because it's dominated by Egypt, then obviously the, the, the main systems in use in Egypt dominate um, the, the type of production that's going on. So it's mainly fresh and brackish water fin fish, uh, like tilapia and mullets. Uh, Marine finfish make up 6% of total production. Um, shrimp uh, makes up about 3% of total production. And there's very, very small amounts of bivalve shellfish and seaweed. Uh, 43 species were recorded as being produced in 2018. Um, that's probably more than, than the actual number because that includes some unidentified uh, species as categories. If we think about options for the way forward, um, then there's a need to make more use of the extensive coastlines, but this requires consultation with other users, and we'll discuss this later. Uh, there's opportunities to increase water efficiency for fresh water, so the kilos produced per litre of water through um, a range of different systems. Uh, diversification of species and, systems, species and systems should be encouraged. And there's very strong policy support for aquaculture development across most of the region, but that needs to focus on profitability in aquaculture systems to attract private sector investment. We'll come back to some of these points later on. The second key message is that it's really important to allocate space, water resources and services and technologies for aquaculture. So 
if we look at aqu Egypt as, as an aquaculture success story, that success was built on the allocation of land and water for aquaculture in the 1980s. And similar zones are under development in Saudi Arabia, Oman, Morocco, UAE, and, and Bahrain. Uh, many of the countries in NENA region are very short of fresh water. And uh, the Egyptian uh, fish farming sector got over that by recycling water from the Nile. It's already passed through irrigation systems. The availability of, of marine fish feed seed is in marine fin fish seed is increasing, but is still limiting. And Egyptian mullet seed is, is wild caught, which risks sustainability and disease. And there are significant resources already allocated for training and research. If we think about the way forwards, then. Uh, allocated zones for aquaculture is something that's, that's been developed uh, in, in the Mediterranean. And uh, there's also other consultation processes, such as under the ecosystem approach for aquaculture from FAO, which are important for allocating space. Um, increasing water efficiency um, can be achieved through systems like in-pond raceways uh, or uh, recirculation aquaculture systems, aquaponics integration of agriculture with aquaculture and developing more marine based farming systems. Um, high quality feeds uh, are already being produced in, in a few countries, particularly Egypt and Saudi Arabia, but access to feeds is really, really important stepping stone for building up an aquaculture industry. Of course, there's an issue of scale there because the feed companies won't invest in production until really um, there is sufficient scale to justify investment in a production facility. But that's a real, really important uh, point to note because feeds obviously make up the largest cost item in most fish farming systems. I think on research and training, then there's a need to have better linkage to between practical aquaculture systems and, and the research that's going on. Um, and also improved uh, seed availability is needed for key species. And in this, I think genetic improvement programs can be critical because then uh, you're building then cumulative increases in, 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 in production potential. Um, and you're then uh, producing a different product to the wild uh, species or the wild strains, let's say. And fish health management is something that um, is extremely important. And there's initiatives on that through the FAO progressive management pathway approach, uh, which needs to be uh, has been backed up by many, many countries in the in the Nina, Nina region, but really needs to be put into a pra into practice to solve problems like uh, white spot in shrimp and, and summer mortality of tilapia. Environmental management is, is really important. Um, so there's a more focus needed on environmental management and aquaculture certification and low input systems. So um, the environmental legislation has been enacted by most countries in the region, but may need further development and, and revision or stronger enforcement. But also national administrations may lack the capacity to actually monitor the impact. So they need to build their capacity to do this. What's an interesting development is the adoption of certification systems uh, by Saudi Arabia and Oman and several other countries, because um, these can really help um, to improve uh, environmental management standards and food safety. Um, and then also there, there's different systems that have, that have different levels of environmental impacts and low, low input aquaculture, such as bivalve, shellfish and seaweeds has barely developed yet in, in Nina, but could be important. So if we look at the way, ways forward, then we need to strengthen and support environmental management and permitting systems. We need to uh, focus on uh, implementing the ecosystem approach to aquaculture and also aquaculture certification systems can play a role and help to maintain standards. Uh, fish farms need to improve their water efficiency. And uh, we also need to think about development strategies for low input aquaculture systems in, in the region. Thinking about marketing, until recently, the main focus in Nina has been on domestic markets, with the exception perhaps of Saudi Arabian shrimp and limited quantities of fish and shellfish from Morocco, Tunisia and Algeria to Europe. The capacity to export varies across the region from Egypt, which has not really invested in, in 
the essential systems and frameworks to export aquaculture products. Um, but to Saudi Arabia, that's really um, from the start has focused on exports. Um, and national certification systems are being established, such as SAMAC in Saudi Arabia, and these could help to build consumer confidence in domestic markets. And what's really noticeable also is that there's very little processing or packaging in the aquaculture markets in NINA. So um, obviously to move forwards, then we need investment uh, to enable the, the, the industries to participate better in international markets. So setting up uh, testing frameworks, certification systems, animal welfare standards, traceability, halal certification, and, and market information for producers. This really calls for effective mar marketing organizations to be established to build both domestic and export markets. Um, also processing is something that adds value and, and convenience and uh, leads to market diversification. So I think this is something that, that really needs to, to be pursued in, in the region. And COVID-19, of course, has demonstrated the importance of local markets and flexible market systems, including online marketing and direct sales. And we should try and build on this further. Thinking about um, aquaculture and food security, uh, contribution to incomes and employment, um, I think better planning is required. Um, so more countries are, are in the NENA region are now considering aquaculture as a strategy for food self-sufficiency and export substitution, um, which is good. Um, but really when we're talking about food security, we're really talking about making sure that the people who can benefit most from consuming fish is able to afford, afford it and have, have access to it. So, um, because the, the nutrition that people get from fish, it's not just protein, it's also the micronutrients, it's also the omega-3 fatty acids. And these can be really important in combating some of the nutritional, nutritional challenges that uh, poor people face, um, such as stunting, wasting, and, and, uh, and, you know, and general development. So uh, aquaculture employment is, is usually in rural areas and with few alternatives and maybe poorly recorded. There's many seasonal and, in and informal jobs in other parts of the value chain. Um, and re there are relatively few jobs for women in, in production uh, settings in, in, in aquaculture in Nina region, but high involvement in retailing. So looking at the ways forward, then I think we really need to look at um, aquaculture production for domestic markets as an option to improve food security and nutrition of the poor and vulnerable. We're, we're missing a trick here if we're not really uh, pushing this as, as one of the main reasons to increase aquaculture production in the region. We also need to have focused strategies to increase participation by women and youth in aquaculture. So. Um, for example, if, if we allowed more homestead-based aquaculture in Egypt, that would allow women to, to get more involved in, in, in the production side of things. Uh, increased pro fish processing would build more jobs in, in aquaculture. And what we found in World Fish was that implementing group-based approaches allowed women particularly to advocate for the support they need to, to participate in the economy. Um, another point is that you know, small, it, it, it isn't small scale businesses or large scale businesses. They, they can both work together and small, but small scale businesses really need the financial and organizational support to build their capacity and adapt their systems alongside the large scale business, businesses such as feed mills. Um, aquaculture in Nina region has faced challenges and we could maybe talk about the three C's. We've got COVID, climate change and conflict. So climate change is already impacting aquaculture systems in the Nina region, particularly through higher summer temperatures, on seasonal flooding, unusual weather patterns, and we can only expect this to get worse. Um, climate, if we look at the climate change pro planning processes, uh, generally, they pay little attention to aquaculture and aquaculture plans tend to ignore climate change. COVID-19, of course, has disrupted aquaculture systems in the Nina region, mainly in the supply chains. 
but also in production. Uh, and that you, we can expect longer term disruption with business failures, unemployment and shrinking household budgets, which could affect marketing of aquaculture uh, produce. And uh, conflict continues to impact several NENA countries. So uh, on climate change, we really need to plan for climate change impacts and, and make the um, industry more resilient by adopting climate smart systems, uh, such as in-pond raceway systems or aeration systems. Um, also, aquaculture planners or managers need to become more engaged in climate change planning processes and really promote aquaculture as a climate smart option because aquaculture compared to other, um, other animal protein sources is uh, a climate smart option because the greenhouse gas emissions from aquaculture are much less than they are for other, other uh, meats like, uh, like um, uh, beef or, or, or sheep. Um, COVID-19 exposed supply chain weaknesses and um, assistance should, should focus on building more resilient, more direct supply chains. And aquaculture will have a role to play in rebuilding the economies of conflict, conflict affected countries, particularly Syria and, and Iraq, which had thriving aquaculture industries before uh, conflict arose. And, and aquaculture will surely have a role to play in, in rebuilding their economies in the future. Uh, one of the things that, that I feel strongly about is that aquaculture sectors need stronger representation. Um, the management systems that are being applied very, wide, very widely across the region, different degrees, degrees of decentralization or autonomy, and one-stop one -stop shop approaches have been applied in Oman and Mor Morocco, and this is a good thing. Um, allocated zones for aquaculture can help to reduce the hurdles faced by aquaculture developers. But in terms of representation, um, in government often aquaculture falls between agriculture and fisheries in government, so it doesn't have strong support. Um, and in many countries, and perhaps the exception is Saudi Arabia, producer organizations aren't really providing sufficient services to members, so you don't get the buy-in from the, from the, from the uh, people who should be supporting the organizations. Um, so looking at the ways forward, we need to review the, the national regulatory frameworks uh, to make sure that they provide an appropriate level of support for sustainable aquaculture development. Um, development policies need to build on success and learn lessons from successful developments in the region and beyond. And representative organizations can really play a ro an important role in co-management of aquacul aquaculture sectors, but they need support to build up membership. Um, so the last key message is that FAO is a trusted partner for continued development of NENA aquaculture. Um, aquaculture development in NENA region fits well with the FAO strategic objectives, the sustainable development goals and the blue growth initiative. And FAO has provided strong support over the years for national administrations to mainstream these approaches into government policies. But NENA aquaculture, I think, has an uphill battle uh, to really quantify its contributions towards SDGs, as the, the targets for SDG, SDG 14 are mainly focused on oceanic and fisheries issues rather than aquaculture. Um, of course, aquaculture will, will be a contributor to many of the other SDG targets. Um, so FAO needs to continue in its role supporting information sharing, regional policy development, capacity building to encourage sustainable aquaculture and development in the region in line with its objectives. Um, aquaculture managers, I feel, need to actively, proactively engage with the high level bodies and ministries managing SDG processes to ensure that all aquaculture contributions are taken into account. And FAO can really play a critical role in continued success of aquaculture in the region through its unique position, and, and it is a unique position, as a trusted partner for governments, non-government organizations and the private sector. Um, as you look at the key messages there, I, I just would like to take the opportunity to, to make some concluding remarks, uh, my own feelings about the, the, um, the sector in, in NENA. 
Um, so I, I started the presentation by saying that that um, there are a wide range of different economies and there's also a wide range of different aquaculture approaches within the region. Um, it's almost like a microcosm of global aquaculture. You've got Egypt as one dominant player in the way, the same way as China is, is dominant in, in aquaculture globally. There's one big exporter, I think, at the minute, which is Saudi Arabia, a bit like Norway or Vietnam, and many other countries trying to strive to build their aquaculture industries. But one of the, the questions that fascinates me is why are some aquaculture industries successful and others fail to scale? So Egypt is really a standout success in NENA region and in Africa, and Saudi Arabia is moving forwards rapidly, uh, but the two industries are following different paths. So what is the key to success? I, I feel that there's two main factors. One is the opportunity and the other one is profitability. So opportunity we've talked about in terms of allocating space for aquaculture, setting up institutional frameworks. Um, there needs to be farmers who want to grow the fish. There needs to be markets for the fish. And I think this, this is really um, something that a lot of countries in NENA region are focused on at the minute. They are doing that very successfully. But the key factor that's led to upscaling of the industries of industries in both Egypt and Saudi Arabia has been profitability of the value chain. There's been enough value in the value chain for everybody in the value chain to make a profit from feed mills, hatcheries, farmers, transporters, wholesalers, retailers, exporters. So that has led to private sector investment, which leads to scale up of the industry. And I look at the efforts to um, build aquaculture industries in several countries in the region and think, are, you are these sufficiently focused on profitability? Because if we don't have profitability, then we're not going to get the scale up that everybody is looking for to build up aquaculture in the region. So I, I would urge you to, to think about this, maybe do the, do the homework on um, on value chain economics and whatever else is necessary, necessary to create uh, profitable value chains that will attract the private sector investment that will scale up aquaculture in the region. So uh, thank you um, for uh, listening to, to my presentation and um, it would be nice to be sitting down in Shanghai or perhaps in Rome and share a coffee and have a chat but if anybody wants to contact me later then that's also fine. Thank you. Malcolm, thank you very much for, for your presentation. There is a lot of information in those slides, a lot of text. So for all of you who are watching us today, don't worry, those slides will be shared on the dedicated website of the Global Aquaculture Conference. So you can download it, work on them, read them carefully, and even maybe re, um, re-listen to, um, to the conversation, to the recorded uh, webinar. Let's now pass immediately to the uh, recorded messages of our uh, invited uh, speakers from the region. Let me introduce them um, chronologically as they will be appearing. The first message comes from Madame Dr. Majida Marouf. She is the director of the National Aquaculture Development Agency in Morocco. The second message will come from Dr. Ali Mohamed Al Shaiji. He is the director general of the General Director of Fisheries, Ministry of Environment, Water and Agriculture from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And then the last message is from Dr. Sharif Sadek, who is from the private sector, director of the Aquaculture Consultant Office in Egypt, and also president of the African chapter of the World Aquaculture Society. So please, can I ask the Secretariat to show the recorded messages? Thank you. Aquaculture production has increased over time, providing an important food source for many across the globe. We know that seafood plays an important role in global food consumption, but we know also that only 5% of global food consumption comes from the oceans. 
This test will be better if we want to reach our global goal of eradicating hunger and extreme poverty. As you know, by 2050, the world population will reach 9 billion people, where two in every five children will be born in Africa. Providing food for everyone is a big challenge for our continent. And in this context, I think that aquaculture, I'm sure that aquaculture is clearly a part of the solution to address food security by providing healthy and sustainable food with lower carbon and water footprint. More than ever, we depend on healthy oceans to meet our need for more food, more jobs, and to make global food system meeting all the needs of people and planets. In this dynamic, with the strategic guidelines of His Majesty the King, Mohammed VI, Morocco has adopted a strategy named Aliotis with the main objective to support the fishery sector and promote aquaculture. Our agency, National Aquaculture Development Agency, is a public institution involved in marine aquaculture strategy. One vision, many opportunities, is our slogan to make aquaculture the driver of the blue economy to develop new opportunities along the aquaculture value chain from seed production to marketing of the final products. Our conviction that aquaculture spatial planning is the key to success in aquaculture strategy and meet the global challenges like food security, climate change, and reach the sustainable development goals. That's why Morocco have adopted spatial planning based on a balance between environmental carrying capacity, social challenges, and economic opportunities as a key driver of our strategy. In this way, a half of the Moroccan coastline has been explored to identify a located zone for aquaculture and to give investors investment opportunity along the value chain. This approach offers economic opportunities at local level. Of 250 aquaculture investment projects, are already approved and selected and over 100 of them are being developed by young entrepreneurs and over another seven are managed by artisanal fishermen making aquaculture sector contributing in economic employment and youth leadership. Today we are driven by common challenges feeding the future, <clears throat> boosting private investment, promoting the economic and social inclusion of young people with new skills, developing sustainable and climate resilience activity. We share common challenges. That's why we believe it's natural to uh, join forces to take our ambition further for blue food. Good day to all of our members and all audience. Today I'll talk to you about food security. As everybody knows, food security is the most challenged uh, topic this year. COVID-19 proven that local production, national production is more important. Now our role to improve the efficiency of local production and to rely on national production instead of importing food. And this is what Saudi Arabia has started. Ministry of Environment, Water and Agriculture focused today on reduce the independence in imported food. 
and increase the national food with high efficiency. In aquaculture sector in Saudi Arabia, we are lucky because we have the Red Sea coastline more than 2,000 kilometer, clean water, the, uh, the, the potential of aquaculture and the current capacity in the Red Sea is pushing us to improve our production and increase it as well. Within the next 10 years, we are targeting to produce half million ton of fish and shrimp. And to achieve that number, we have done our foundation and preparation work. We improve our biosecurity program. The surveillance is covering all the sectors, including the companies, private sector, and the government uh, entities as well, including market and the uh, open and wild as well. We improve the uh, certification. Today we are using and we are enforcing all the companies to, uh, to be certified as best aquaculture practice. Aquaculture Alliance, it is one of the uh, important items to be uh, applied in Saudi Arabia. Today, 90% of the producer of aquaculture and seawater having the Global Aquaculture Alliance, best aquaculture practice. By end of 2020, we are targeting to achieve 100% all companies to achieve that uh, schemes. And by end of this year, we will, we will celebrate that all aquaculture companies in Saudi Arabia has GIA standard, which is, I think, only the country in the world has that standard. We improve our local production uh, quality mark. We have a quality mark, it's called SAMAC. SAMAC stands for Saudi Arabia Mark Aquaculture Quality. The scheme of this mark, it's helping the producer and the consumer to trust and build the confidence on the seafood in Saudi Arabia. Seafood consumption is one of the elements we focus. Seafood consumption in Saudi Arabia, we are below 50% the international standard or target. We are aiming now to, by coming years, to achieve that number. And we are working closely with all private sector and with all public to increase the awareness of seafood consumption and the, the, the health behind. R&D is big part, and we are focusing and to develop the efficiency and the species in Saudi Arabia. Today, R&D is playing strong part, and we have engaged with uh, universities, local universities, with international bodies also to support, and by end of 2023, we'll be able to complete all researches we are working on to achieve the 2030 target. Saudi Arabia has a potential. We had uh, a great location and connecting connected location. And this one, it is helping us and supporting us as well to be a leader aquaculture producer in the world. Thank you very much. Good morning, Sharif Sadek. I am the president of African Chapter uh, World Aquaculture Society and director of Aquaculture Consultant Office in Egypt. Thank you for inviting a representative from the private sector among the NINA review panelists. The aquaculture industry in the 17 states that make up the Near East and North Africa region has attracted mass, much attention over the past decade, and it is increasingly becoming a focused economic sector for national food security and employment development. In, two, uh, in 2018, the region had a population of around 358 million living in area that is predominantly arid and semi-arid, but with exp extensive coastline. Regardless of the harsh environment, limited freshwater resources, and the fact that the region currently contributing only 1.4% of the global fish production, we have seen a sharp increase in production from 1.2 million ton in 2013 to 1.7 million tons in 2018. Egypt is a key producer in the region, but the growing outputs from the country such as Saudi Arabia and Tunisia, just to mention a few clearly show that the effort undertaken to extend the industry by the authority and fish farmer are achieving results. I see the need to continue strengthening public-private partnership as a key challenge and as a means to secure the growth of the industry through the adoption of efficient technology along the entire value chain that are sustainable and inclusive. A strength 
partnership will very likely increase investment in the sector. The overall challenge remains on how to incentivize private aquaculture development that will lead to investment at all levels, industrial as well as small scale operation, while safeguarding the environment, making good use of the resources, and last but not least, securing the production of safe consumer products. This partnership needs to focus on the key aspects that will enable to, uh, the private entrepreneur to drive the development process of the sector. This may include targeted incentive such as favorable land and water lease agreement tax incentivize on imported and selected local farming inputs, local feed production using locally produced ingredients and the better use of technical competencies available in the private sector to secure specific public service. Furthermore, public sector authorities should collaborate more intimately with established and reputable private sector facility, be those hatchery, feed plant, or, uh, or processing facility, in supporting applied and targeted research activities that will uh, surely lead to in innovations across the value chain and eventually benefit the industry as a whole. Most uh, countries in the region will require the adoption of climate smart and water efficient technology that will enable locally per capita fish consumption to approach the global annual average of about 20 kilograms without the reliance of imported products. I will not forget to mention the importance of proactive gender transformative approach required to increase employment opportunity for women and youth in aquaculture in the region. More can be done in this regards. Uh, finally, the private sector as a whole needs to be better organized and adequately represented through professional sector associations that will give them a voice and allow sharing of experience and knowledge with, within the outside the region. I welcome FAO initiative in organizing this regional aquaculture review webinars in preparations of the Global Aquaculture Conference in 2021. It is expected that the conference will set a clear path for the further development of the sector in NINA region, as well as globally also through the fostering of a stronger international collaboration and driven by uh, FAO. See you all Shanghai in September 2021. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank all our distinguished panelists, which are in fact here with us today to answer some of the questions that are coming in. Just very briefly, I would like to just uh, highlight a few points uh, from Dr. Maruf, where she's in she is mentioning of the importance to ensure that our environment, our productive environment, our land, our waters, freshwater marine are kept healthy for the purpose of producing food. Dr. Ali from Saudi Arabia, he highlighted the importance to improve the efficiency in local aquatic food production and also the importance of improved government agencies that provide essential institutional support to the private sector. While Dr. Sadek, he mentioned the importance of strengthening public and private partnership and, um, <clears throat> and the adoption of climate smart and water efficient technology, particularly in this region. So, we will now enter the um, question and answer sessions. We are going to be respond, uh, asking some questions that we have received already. They had been already submitted to us and, uh, and others which we are picking up from the question and answer box below. So my first question is addressed to um, Dr. Dixon. Please you know, answer to the point and you will have a minute. The question reads as follows. How will the development of aquaculture in countries outside the region enhance or deter the expansion of, of the aquaculture sector in the NENA region itself? Over to you, Malcolm. You have one minute. Thanks, Andrew. Um, I would say that um, if, you, if you look at, uh, at aquaculture and um, the supply of aquaculture produce to the to the region then most countries are importing fish um, in large quantities and even Egypt that um, produces um, so much fish itself uh, two-thirds of the fish 
consumed by Egyptians is coming from aquaculture production in the country. But um, another uh, what, uh, sixth of the fish is, is imported. Um, and uh, so the, the, you have such a large amount of imports that actually um, I don't think that there's going to be any major impacts uh, on aquaculture, the development of aquaculture by developments uh, in nearby countries or in the region. And in fact, I think that I, I could foresee a situation where several of the, um, the countries in the region become major exporters of fish to, because it's strategically located between uh, Europe, uh, Asia, and also Africa. And I think that there's great opportunities to build export markets um, beyond uh, the domestic markets as well. Thank you, Malcolm, for that um, uh, clear and to the point question uh, answer. The, the next question goes to Dr. Marouf, and it reads as follows. The future growth of aquaculture development in the region is in the hands of the private sector. How important are state agencies, such as the one directed by you, ANDA, in assisting the private sector to engage in the industry and what is their key function? Over to you, Dr. Marouf. I see that uh, I think uh, we've lost uh, Dr. Marouf from, from the participants. We have a connection problem with Morocco, unfortunately. Maybe I can see uh, Dr. Ali Shahihi, he's uh, online. Good afternoon to you. There's also a question for you, Ali. So allow me to read it. Here it is. Solid biosecurity setups at country levels will be important for aquaculture to grow in the region and to efficiently deal with disease outbreaks. In this respect, how efficient is regional collaboration and what is being done to enhance this collaboration? You have one minute, Dr. Ali. Unmute yourself, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for everybody, a great uh, event and I wish everybody to get uh, a lot of benefit, a lot of useful information today we hear from all the participants. Uh, for biosecurity, we have a story in Saudi Arabia in 2010, we've been affected totally, all the industry. And 2013, when we back to the, the working normal, biosecurity was the, our, what you call the flag, that to be, to be raised all the time. Biosecurity to move from a system to be belief. Now all companies, all stakeholder, and um, uh, employees, worker, everybody's have a strong belief in biosecurity. Now, we, we, from that belief, we move to the standard to make uh, what you call uh, the biosecurity in our life is a normal. And for all practice, for all the process, biosecurity, it has a step in. Now, we are sharing with our neighbor, sharing water, sharing market, sharing uh, um, facilities and equipment, uh, feed. This sharing, it could be going, uh, driven us back again. Now, to avoid that problem in the future, we have to participate and to develop the, the region. From the Gulf region, we work closely with our neighbor countries and we share our biosecurity system. We make a common, what you call, uh, understanding and we learn from each other. And yesterday uh, seminar was a proof in that uh, we are working and thinking the same. All countries now thinking to develop aquaculture and it is uh, with a way to go up with the biosecurity. Without biosecurity, the, the, the industry will collapse anytime. Our neighbor country from the other side, from Africa, it is very important now to think seriously about the biosecurity and to move on. Today, we are in the same boat. Either we move all out safely or we shrink all together. But biosecurity, it is a, it is a success factor for the industry. Dr. Ali, thank you very much for your response. Uh, time is running 
fast. So I will go to my next question, which I can see here is directed to Dr. Sharif Sadek. So Sharif, allow me to read the question. Will a growth in the regional market for fish and fish products be the key driver for aquaculture development in the Nena region? Or will the availability of cheaper imported products hinder such a development? You have one minute. Go ahead. Yes, I'm believing that the fish products or aquaculture activity in the Nina region will take uh, an important role. The actual population in Nina today is around 360 million uh, population. It will reach in 10 years. Uh, 435, so the, uh, the population it will increase 130. Still, from the 17 countries of the NINA, uh, three, uh, four countries are showing more, more than 50% of sharing aquaculture in Egypt and Iraq and Jordan and Saudi Arabia. Uh, uh, so the opportunity, it will be a good opportunity for the other country to, uh, in NINA to produce more aquaculture uh, rather than today. I need to focus also that during the last decade or the 10 years, uh, the import was increased double. We used to import around 800 million uh, thousand tons. Today, Nina is importing around 1 million 400 thousand tons. So we have a good opportunity to let, I think, the aquaculture taking the good rule instead of importing sea fish. Sharif, thank you very much for your answer. I think the time is really quite limited uh, and uh, we have received a lot of questions and I wish I could ask all of them, but I can assure you that we will uh, look at every single question and make sure that they are covered or answered in the regional review that we are preparing and um, which will eventually be published by FAO. And due to the time, I would like to now, um, I would like to first of all, um, pass on the word back to Matthias Halbert, head of the aquaculture branch for his brief uh, concluding remarks. Over to you, um, Matthias. Well, thank you, Sandro. And, and many thanks really to all of you, to the panelists and to our lead author, Malcolm for such an exciting and interesting hour of information exchange in the NENA region. I think we can complement uh, the proactive efforts made by many countries in the NENA region to expand aquaculture sustainably. Um, and aquaculture output in the region, as we have heard, has been growing steadily. And we have heard there's a large potential for the sector to further expand, particularly in the marine environment. But when it comes to brackish and freshwater environments, that more innovative, climate smart, resource efficient and integrated systems will be key due simply to the scarcity of freshwater. Then um, a concluding uh, thought is this importance of regional collaboration and, and the exchange of experiences that was stressed so much. I mean, this is happening in some areas, as the Honorable Minister from Oman mentioned, the important roles of RECOFI and GFCM. And it will be increasingly necessary, particularly as, in, as um, production systems become more intensive. And when they become more intensive, those biosecurity issues arise that we just talked about. And the problem there, of course, is that as with the case of COVID-19, that pathogens do not have nor respect borders. So aquatic biosecurity is a really important pillar of our work here. And FAO stands ready to assist the region to better understand and adopt this progressive management pathway approach in aquatic health management that we have been promoting. On another note, the, reg the region is quite well aware about the importance of preserving its environment and the precious natural resource that it has. And most countries have enacted relevant environmental legislations to ensure that farming practices are carried out sustainably. And it appears, however, 
that a stronger implementation may be necessary as the sector indeed continues to grow. And then finally, as we have also heard from other regions yesterday, the aquaculture production for domestic markets, and especially for those flexible markets that Malcolm mentioned with online and direct sales, that needs to be further promoted as an option to improve food security and overall improve the nutritional value of local diets. So again, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you once again to all, to our panelists, uh, to our moderator, and to the ones who have worked hard behind the scenes to make this webinar happen. Back to you, Sandra. And you need to unmute yourself. Oh yes, sorry, I tried, but okay. Thank you, Matthias, for 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 your for your closing remarks. Um, well, this brings us to the end of this uh, very interesting webinar. I would like to uh, thank again on behalf of FAO to uh, the <clears throat> to our um, panelists, uh, Dr. Marouf, Dr. Ali Shahi, and Dr. Sadek from Egypt. And of course, His Excellency, the Minister uh, Saud Al Habsi, for their key messages and participation. This is not the last uh, webinar. We have one happening this afternoon, which will be covering, which will cover North America, and we will have more uh, uh, tomorrow. And we will conclude with the last webinar on Thursday at the same time on the Global Aquaculture webinar. So we hope to see you on board. Have a nice afternoon and see you soon. Bye for now. Bye-bye.